to say, Peter, I find that um, so much of the goings on at the moment in UK politics so low rent, and it makes me kind of just go like, ugh, are we not better than all this ridiculousness? Well, we ought to be, but the problem is that politics has, has died in this country. It was driven out of politics by the Blair government. Uh, the, the Parliament ceased to be a political chamber in which there was division. The political parties ceased to be opposed to each other. And they began, instead of representing the people to the state, they began to represent the state to the people. And what we really have needed for a very long time in this country has been serious reform of the two major parties. Uh, in my view, they should be replaced. The trouble is that things continue as normal while this goes on, and an awful lot of people still habitually support the two parties. And we are faced with an election in which those uh, the, the, the remaining... Uh, bodies of tribal support will clash against each other probably in October or November and we will have an election which one side or the other will win. And it will still be very important who wins because on this occasion, after so many years of continuous non-Labour government, the Labour Party will come back to office if it comes back with a very, very full but not disclosed programme of major reforms which will shock people if they come. So it's this, this, this strange combination of the, the total deadness of politics, the disgraceful weakness of the ideas of particularly the Conservative Party, but at the same time, one of the most important elections in terms of deciding the future of the country that we've ever had. Do you agree with that, Aaron? Well, Labour's hands are going to be bound to a significant extent by their inheritance. Um, although that said, things will be picking up and that's always helpful. Just quickly, by the way, on Jonathan Gullis, don't agree with the word he says politically, but I would want somebody like that next to me if I was in a pickle. Well, he's been rallied then, hasn't he? Yeah, there's, but his, there's not... His speech has worked, Sunak's speech has uh, worked wonders. Well, I just, there's not many Conservative MPs that look and sound like that at the moment. They look and sound defeated. And I think a big part of that is they just had another cuts to national insurance contributions. It was 2p that came in in January, another 2p on the way. Tens of billions of pounds worth of tax cuts. Mm. Um, you know, not really tax cuts, because, of course, the thresholds haven't, haven't moved. But big, big, big moves in terms of people's finances and their polling's gone down. So for that kind of fighting talk, I'm surprised. And he overtly said, election second half of the year. I know, but you did the budget um, special with me. Mm. And we spoke, didn't we, to a room of people. I had lots of people emailing in at the time. And about that national insurance thing, people were, we got a few different responses. A lot of pensioners, for example, or people that didn't work said, well, this doesn't affect me, yeah. so I'm no, I'm no better off. Yeah. And then that whole kind of fiscal drag situation where a lot of people have now either been pulled into paying uh, income tax in the first place or into a higher band, mm -hmm. and it's those people that are just not touched. I'm asking you at home, do you feel any better off today, this inflation figure much lower uh, than was expected? But, of course, inflation still means that prices are rising... They're just rising to a slower extent. And also, they've probably just had their council tax bills through for, well, the, for the year ahead, and they are up big time. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, quite. It isn't, it isn't really very much. In any case, what the Conservative Party will not acknowledge is that what people actually want are not, uh, are not necessarily cuts in taxation, but better spending of the taxes that they mm. pay. They, if, you, if somebody seriously came and offered them a, a proper reform of the police and the criminal justice system under which criminals would begin to be deterred and punished, I think an awful lot of people would vote for that. Labour would never come up with such a policy. If you came up with an education policy which meant that people weren't condemned to, to bad education if they, if they weren't rich, a lot of people would go for that one too. Uh, if they came up with a transport policy which actually uh, allowed people to get to and from work, that wouldn't be bad either. But they don't have any of these ideas. They, they, they're constantly preoccupied with lowering tax by a penny here and a penny there. Mm. Com completely failing to understand, apart from anything else, the, the extent to which tax went up and inflation went up after they shut down the country in 2020 was so huge that these things are, 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 are just... Are, are just tiny compared with what they've already lost. And tobacco and vapes, that was a bill. Um, this is a passion of Rishi Sunak's, isn't it? And a lot of people will say, well, is this the right focus for him to have? That's spot on. You know, I was looking at some of the policies that they're emphasising at the moment. A football regulator. Yeah. Uh, scrapping or banning cigarettes for a certain age group. I agree with the ban on single-use vapes, but we can park that. Um, just policy after policy and you think, what on earth are you doing? Like, the country is racked by so many major challenges, AI, and it's almost like, you know, Rishi Sunak has just gone into this little tunnel of his own interests, which have absolutely no 
um, relationship to the, the grievances and issues of the public at well, large. Well, Rishi, Rishi obviously would argue that he's very passionate um, about AI and that is a, a key focus uh, of his government. But these vapes, I was paying attention the other day. Mm. Uh, I specifically decided, let me just look at how much of an issue this vape thing is. Mm. And I was quite surprised mm. by how many young kids... Yeah are vaping and I even saw a clip and some of you might have seen this clip there was this kid at a football match the other day and the camera had kind of picked him up and he was vaping yeah. and to me it looked like he was about I don't know 12 and then obviously he saw the camera and put it away and I thought what is going on and some of the kids that I saw I was in a hole I must confess watching this they were with adults I don't know if it was their parents but the children was with adults doing it the children was doing it mm. in the company of adults and I thought, well, maybe it is a much bigger issue than I've been giving it credit for. Well, single-use vapes in particular, those are the ones that young people, children are attracted to. Um, they are incredibly uh, dirty. They're, they're impossible to recycle. Um, and like you say, children don't really look at them as a tobacco product or a cigarette. They look at them almost as a sweet. And I think some adults as well look at them like that. And so that, for me, is a major reason why I think the ban on single-use vapes, not all vapes, single-use ones, is a very compelling argument because... Uh, particularly th how they're used by young people. It's a good argument. It's not an election winner, is it? No, I agree with that. They're not going to pour out of their houses on election day. No, I agree with that. We're going to put an end to vaping is an extremely suspicious thing because we don't know hardly any evidence is in on just how dangerous it is for, for children or adults. And mm. yet government virtually encourages it as an alternative to smoking, which I think is, will prove to have been a major mistake. But it's not an election issue. If you actually... I mean, this, isn't, this is something which, which con concerns me too as a cyclist. The state of the roads. Mm. It is an enormous gripe among so many people. They can't get to work properly because the roads are in such a, a mess, potholed. Uh, dug up, endlessly ceaselessly dug up, inadequate, and of course, in many cases, plagued by all kinds of traffic regulations which punish people for driving. But that's why, when you see these visuals of the zebra crossing things now that have been painted uh, with swirly rainbows, you look at them and think, what on earth are you doing? Who is in charge? Who is making these decisions? And where on earth is their mind? If you ask me, it's not in the right place.